We have a very special video to share with you guys. In March of 2018, we were on our sailboat Varuna off the coast of Pacific Mexico at the Rivierjados Archipelago. It's a group of four islands uh, about 300 miles south of Cabo San Lucas. While we were there, we had the chance to catch up with an amazing marine biologist, researcher, diver, and photographer, Eric Higuera who, amongst many other things, works with the Solmar 5 liveaboard dive boat. So uh, my name is Eric Higuera and I work on the Soma Fi as a videographer and photographer as well. I'm also a marine biologist and I come to Revia Hedo Islands almost every 10 days between November and June to film the underwater life and also to track the movement patterns of the giant mantas between the archipelago. Well, everything started when I was six. Uh, my father used to work on uh, an aquatic park in South Central Mexico. Uh, and while, while my brothers and I were waiting for my father to finish his job, to finish, to stop working every day, we used to get in the water because the, uh, this aquatic park, there were pools. Mm -hmm. So we used to spend the rest of the day swimming in the pools, my brothers and I, while uh, we waited for our father. With marine life? Or? No, without marine life, but with just pools. And then uh, uh, at the same time, the Custo documentaries were being played in the um, national TV. So uh, I used to watch those uh, that series of Custo, and uh, that got me into the idea to to see the underwater uh, life when, uh, when I got older. And I used to practice in the pool how to hold my bread, and that's where I learned how to swim Well, uh, I waited for my father. So basically the Cousteau documentaries and uh, the, uh, all those many days of swimming in the pool while well, I waited for my dad to come out. What I really wanted to do is to study uh, the underwater life. Uh, and when I, when I went to high school, I taught that uh, to be a marine biologist, you were going to scuba dive. And I was kind of wrong, because you, one thing is to become a marine biologist, and another thing is to become a scuba diver. So it's different, different, uh, different training that can be uh, taken simultaneously. So, uh, but also what I wanted to do is to, to, to document underwater life behavior. That's what it attracts me the most. And I got my degree in marine biology. And at the same time, I was already a school instructor. And I had the opportunity in the late 90s to have a point and shoot camera. And I started taking underwater photos. And I told the world, the greatest photos ever <laughs> with a single point and shoot camera. I remember it was an Olympus camera that a friend of mine, uh, uh, another scuba instructor, uh, gave it to me as a present. Like those little underwater ones in there? Yeah, yes, it's, yeah. you know, point and shoot, yeah. that's all. Uh, and he, I remember I could take also low resolution videos with the um, uh -huh. point and shoot camera. Yeah. So I started taking videos pretty much of all the. Uh, the uh, behavior of the marine life, I was seeing while I was guiding my, uh, uh, guiding the, uh, the divers, the uh, customers. And later on I got another camera, a better camera, still a point and shoot, and then finally I got an SLR camera, and then I got another one, and so on, and uh, I got a job of, uh, where well, the first time I grabbed a dedicated video camera, it was with uh, 
with a friend of mine that wanted to film whale sharks and manta rays from the past mm -hmm. and put like a sport uh, like a like a short film together about these uh, giant mantas and whale sharks from the past but she for some reason I took it out I was driving the boat that she had charter and she couldn't swim at that moment and I said well if you don't mind I can I can get the footage for you you just wait for me on the panga you drive it and I film it and she said yeah you can do that so she let me use her video camera and then jumped in and started filming the whale sharks and um, that was it. You were hooked? Yeah, I was hooked. <laughs> so do you all self-taught then? For the yeah. For photography and video? Yeah. Wow. wow. That's amazing then, the yeah. photos you get. Yeah, like, I'm a self-taught. That's pretty cool. Of course, you know, uh, I make questions to professional photographers, to professional yeah. uh, cinematographers, uh, you know, small tricks or money things that they definitely uh, taught me. Uh, some uh, secrets or yeah. tricks now. Yeah. Since 2006, I've been coming to Rabi Aijedo pretty much every 10 days during the season, which is November to June. And it never gets old, right? No. Yeah. So. When I came here, well, I have already time uh, working as a dive instructor in the Sea of Ortez. And there used to be manta rays there. The population of mantas in the Sea of Ortez wasn't as big as the one is here. So it was probably formed by less than 100 individuals. But uh, they were fished out. And the overfishing took the, uh, the population of mantas from the, that were hanging around La Paz area. The, uh, the overfishing took the population to the collapse in 2003. 2002 was the last year we saw it. Yeah, they were, they were fishing the manta rays. So was that around like a Spiritual Santo or just right there? Cerralbo. Cerralbo. Yeah. Cerralbo is a beautiful Giant island. mantas used to go to a lighthouse that is three miles north of uh, uh, Cerralbo Island. Wow. And mantas used to go there to get clean. Wow. wow. The same interaction as uh, yeah. the, the mantas here. Uh, and that, 2002 was the last time you saw 2002 that? 2002 was the last year and they, they haven't returned. Since then, a uh, couple of years, last year and, two, and also two years ago, four, I think five different mantas were sighted in this place in September. Last year and September two years ago. The that giant, was it. giant mantas. Giant yeah, mantas. Yeah. That was it. But they didn't stick around. So we thought that they were going to start coming back, but they, they, they didn't. Who knows if in the future, you know, individuals from from uh, another population of mantas in the Eastern Pacific, perhaps the population that is in Puerto Vallarta, maybe some of the individuals here, uh, maybe they're gonna start coming back to, to La Paz. Since recording this interview with Eric, there's been some really exciting news. The giant mantas have actually come back to the Gulf of California as of fall 2018. For more information, be sure and check out the links in the video description. Anyway, I saw the population uh, going to the collapse and when I started coming to Revia here in 2006, I saw that there were mantas here and they, the population seemed to be, now I know the population is healthy and it's, it's formed by at least more than 600 uh, individuals. But, uh, but I, I noticed that and, and I didn't want anything, I didn't want anything happen to, to this population. So I started taking photos and collect photo IDs of the mantas and at one point six years later I have a very broad and extensive database of mantas and that put me in the position to have the largest database of mantas in Revia Hill. So I got connected with other uh, friends that were in uh, at the university with me and that they were studying uh, other animals like, like, like whale sharks in the past. So we joined forces and we started taking, uh, taking this uh, scientific research on mantas beyond uh, beyond of only taking uh, photo identification. So we got funded by uh, WWF, uh, uh, by PADI, and by other organizations as well to get satellite tags and put those tags on the mantas and see uh, where they uh, where they go when leave the archipelago. Yeah. Because through photo identification, I found out how the mantas move between the island, between the islands in the archipelago, why they're here, what the reasons are, and uh, uh, 
what happens when they leave the archipelago. So, and where do they go from primarily? Nobody knows. I mean, nobody. They definitely travel more than 200 miles wow. around uh, the archipelago. But the reason why the Yaymans are in Rebia Hedo is because they have a place to get clean. They have food. They have protection. Uh, those are the illegal conditions that a marine animal needs to survive and to make and have babies. So the mantas mate here, get pregnant in the archipelago, but don't give birth in the, in the archipelago. They go somewhere else to give birth. That's what I want to find out. So I want to put those out of the tax of pregnant mantas to see where they go because yeah. the station period is 11 and 12 months. 11, 12 months. So if I use a tag that is programmed to be deployed in 12 months on a pregnant man that is already yeah. pregnant. Yeah. It's just one baby at a time. It's, a, it's one baby yeah. at a time. Wow. So uh, that's what I want to know. So once I find out where to go to give birth, you know, to to create uh, manage plans with the uh, government, with CONAMP and Seminar to protect those uh, areas, which are the nursery grounds for the yeah. mantas. Due to the diversity and uniqueness of life here on these islands, the Rivia Hajitos was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site in July of 2016. And in November of 2017, 150,000 square kilometers was designated both as a Mexican national park and it is now the largest marine park in North America. Not only on the water, also uh, land, land based like the uh, volcano, people, geologists, uh, people that study birds. Uh, reptilians and in Socorro and, uh, and also other uh, scientific researchers uh, are studying the sharks, other researchers are studying the vertebrates, other ones are studying uh, uh, the whale sharks, uh, other researchers study the uh, marine mammals like the uh, whales, humpback whales, and I joined forces with the project Whale Shark Mexico which is uh, directed by uh, a friend that was in media university called Benny Ramirez, which joined forces and and extend the uh, the uh, project. And now she and I had the project of tagging mantas and wedge sharks in Revia Hedo, just to see the, the patterns of where they go. Uh -huh. Our goal right now is to put a solid attack on a wedge shark. Yeah. Yeah. Any wedge shark, but if if it's pregnant, that would be like the uh, uh -huh. my friend found out that they, there is a resident population of juvenile whale sharks in the Gulf of California. And they move from La Paz up to Los Angeles and yeah. come back. It's the same population when they're still young. Wow. So once they become uh, sexual mature, they probably leave the, uh, the Gulf of California and go somewhere else. Yeah. And she found also that pregnant whale sharks visit the Gulf of California in June, May and June, probably to give birth. She sighted uh, small whale sharks in, in the Gulf, so that's an indicator that probably yeah. the Gulf of California is a nursery ground for whale sharks. She also, she's also found out the uh, connectivity between the Gulf of California and Rebia Hill. Thanks to all the efforts of these scientific research uh, from different organizations, different people that were put together, uh, gave tools to the government to increase the efforts and collaborate in order to get the status of UNESCO and later on with the same efforts try harder to change the status of biosphere reserves to a national park so the uh, fishing is not allowed in the archipelago yeah. so that was a big step yeah. it's still UNESCO but now it's a national park and now it's no fishing at all right no, no sport fishing, fishing or recreation no. or nothing yeah. You need special permits to come here to scuba dive, to hang out, as you guys know. And uh, now the next steps is uh, to keep it this way, to collaborate with the other livable boats, to uh, properly manage and uh, properly approach to the underwater life of the archipelago and keep it as healthy as it is now. The government restricts how many little boats can come out here too? Like they're really not, yet. Okay. not yet. So if you have the that's money good, right now, they That's can get a good it question. Yeah. He has to do it. Yeah. Yes, too many people can also affect the life. Thanks everyone for watching. If you found this video interesting, if you learned something, please share it with your friends. 
hope you like it. Leave a comment. Thanks very much. Until next time. Adios. Cheers. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, hey, thank camera. You. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you.